it's new here. So most of my videos have been more about like real estate and finance, but I also want to reach out and do like personal growth videos. And this could be for high school students, college students, or even like if you're in the workplace and you're trying to advance, I want to make, I guess, professional growth videos as well. So this one's going to be a bit more towards the high school students. And I feel that this video will make a big difference to people that are in the high school right now, because whether you're looking at dual enrollment or AP, there's a big difference in terms of which one's actually going to be better for you and better for your academic career. I do want to add that not every high school is going to have dual enrollment. Most high schools should have AP. I would hope that they do. AP is pretty standard. It's just professors at the high school teaching college classes. Dual enrollment's a bit different. They have like a partnership with a university or a college locally, and you actually go there to take your classes instead of doing it at the high school. So not every school is going to have it. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now I'm going to put both dual enrollment and AP on the board and do a side-by-side -side comparison so you could decide which one's better. I have this just for notes because I took them beforehand. So I'm going to put dual here for dual enrollment. It's a life down the middle. That was a little ugly, but we'll live. And you got AP. Actually, no, we won't live. Let me change that because that does look ugly. Oh, I never passed art. Okay, so... Now, basically what we're gonna compare first is how you get in. So for AP, basically all you need to do is get teacher approval. So the teacher that you had last year, she has to just basically say, okay, I believe the student is qualified to take this class and I think they'll succeed. So basically just to get into an AP class, the teacher prior has to give the okay for it. Now for dual enrollment, it's a bit different. For dual enrollment, basically what you need to do is I, I think for at least for my school it was once you were a sophomore in high school you could take an exam and you had to take this exam and pass it to be able to take dual enrollment so it's basically just gonna put it here exam required now what we're gonna look at is how much they're worth in terms of credits so college is based off credits and for a dual enrollment class, you're in a class at a college, so it's going to be worth the full three credits. Now for AP, it's the same thing, it's going to be worth three credits. Now, there's a big difference in the time. This is personally what I find the most important difference. For dual enrollment, it's only going to be a semester, which is about four months, let's say, because some people start in September, late August, it wraps up around like December, so give or take like four months. Semester. And now it's one semester and you still get three credits. Now for an AP, that's going to be a whole school year for that one class. And a school year is basically two semesters because it starts around the same time as college, so around like August, September. You get the break in winter and then you wrap up around in May. Same thing for college, just they have spring and fall. Now, the other one I wanted to touch on was what you need to even get credit for it. So now to get credit in dual enrollment, super simple. All you have to do is pass a class. If you get a C plus or higher, you're good to go. You got credit for it, you're good. You still got some mind space there, that's all you need. Now for AP, it's a bit more complicated. You could have straight A's throughout the whole class, but it won't even matter if you don't pass the AP exam. So you could have straight A's in that AP exam, and I knew people that that was the case. They'd have just A's, and then when it came time for the exam, they might have gotten nervous, they were sick, something came up, and they got a two. You need a three on the exam, and it's from one to five. So if you get a one or a two, you don't even get credit for the class. I mean, it'll go on your high school record, but it will not go on your college record. So I'll actually use that as my next bullet point here, or I guess number, because it's not really bullets. But yeah, so for dual enrollment, basically, you're going to get the grade counted or it's going to go on your record as long as you pass it. If you don't, it still goes on your record, so that's kind of sucky. Just don't fail <laughs> and you'll be fine. But now for AP, 
it only goes on your record if you passed. And depending on the university you attend, they're gonna require possibly a four or five to even take it. So some universities, like let's say if you got a three on the AP exam and you passed it, you got credit for it, but for that university, they're not gonna take it. So it's as if you didn't even get credit for it. So keep that in mind. So now, this part, it depends on the person, how you want to look at it, but for dual enrollment, the assignments are worth more since it's a shorter term. So every homework assignment or exam or quiz is going to be 5, 10, 15% of your grade. Now it's a bit stressful when you think of it, but it really makes you focus and narrow down and you know how much it's worth, so you put that much more effort into it. And it's a short time, so it's not too much of a sacrifice, I would say, as opposed to, let's say, an AP, where it's a whole year, you have a bunch of assignments and they all just compound on each other. 1% assignments, half a percent assignment, and they just go on for, for the whole year. So you've gotta be more on top of yourself the whole year as opposed to with dual enrollment. You gotta be on top of yourself for four months. So that would have been right back here. I actually went in to review the last video just to see how it was going. I didn't even realize that you couldn't even see AP. My bad, I'm still new, I make mistakes. Oh <laughs> well, I put it up here AP now so you can see it more clearly. My bad on that. So now we're gonna go into the seventh point here. Let me open this up. Now for the seventh point, this is more of a psychological aspect of it. In dual enrollment, there's a confidence building aspect to it because when you're in a room and you're the youngest one there, but you're taking the same classes as other people and they're college ready and they're proven, so are you, you're in that class, you've proved you deserve to be there. That gives you a real boost in confidence and I feel like that affects your grades, your life. It's just a really nice boost mentally, psychologically. It, it really helps having that in there. But when you're in AP, you're amongst other people that are just as smart as you. They're all competing to go to like high universities or getting the best grade in the class or being top ranked in the school. It's pretty intimidating and it could get to you sometimes. So I'll say that's key. Now, this is the last one I really want to touch on, but for this one, it's going to be resources. When you're in a university or a college, you have a lot of resources at your disposal. It could be internships, it could be just like maybe job shadowing or just working part-time but in your major or even like resume building. This is a four-year university slash like college. So they have everything ready to get you out into the real world. Granted, you're still young, but you have those extra years or that extra time to get ahead of everyone else since you have those resources at your disposal. Now AP, it's just a class. It's not really a big difference. The only advantage, I guess, is you get to network with other AP students and the professor will be really nice and he could help you out. But you're still in high school. You don't really have any additional resources that anyone else in that high school won't have. So you gotta keep that in mind. So a little bit about myself. I actually took one AP class. I wasn't that fond of it. I got a four, I was happy, I got out of there. But at the same time that I was taking the AP, I was doing dual enrollment. I was able to knock out two in the fall and then two in the spring. So I took four dual enrollment classes as I knocked out this one AP. So I got three credits in that AP, but I got 12 credits in dual enrollment. So you can see the big difference and I noticed that I stopped taking APs after that. My biggest focus was on dual, on dual enrollment. I was able to knock out 30 college credits by the time I graduated. So basically, I skipped a year of college. I graduated at 21. I just graduated now in May, so I'm thankful. I'm working at my job. 
And due to that, I'm actually having an additional year of income, professional income. And that's gonna be a video that I'll touch on later. But granted, I have an additional year of income that most people won't have since I graduated at 21 as opposed to 22. Now, it's really up to you which one you wanna pursue, whether you wanna do AP or whether you wanna do dual enrollment. But at the end of the day, you gotta look at, are you work, gonna work harder or are you gonna work smarter? Dual enrollment's the way to go. It's much more efficient. You can still take some AP if you want just to knock out some time at school, but always maximize dual enrollment. AP could just be like an additional tool to help you instead of just taking an honors class. But dual enrollment, since it's gonna be after school or after hours, maximize that as much as you can and just use this to give you that little boost. So then possibly if you do this once you're a sophomore, possibly even a junior, which might be a little late, you could graduate with your associates at the same time as your high school. So keep that in mind and really think about where you want to be by the time you graduate. I hope you enjoyed this video, so please hit the like button. It means a lot. It'll help out my channel. I'm still new. I'm still growing. And if you have any questions or you want me to do another video about something you have some interest in, just drop it down in the comments. I'll get to it. Or whether you just want to say hi, I'll say hi back. Another thing is for my first 100 subscribers, I'm going to drop my phone number down in the description. So you could text me whenever, or you could give me a call, and I could help you out. This is only going to be for the first 100 though, because after that, if I have too many people with my number, it could get a, bit of, a little bit hectic. But for the first 100, I appreciate you and I want to show that. Thank you and have a good day.